Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Blue Marble Science. According to Eric Dubay, Cavendish has never been duplicated. Really? Warning, severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out those oven mitts, push the monitors back out of punching range, and let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. So Cavendish has never been duplicated, huh? That must have been a year and a half long dream I was having. Listen to this. In 1797, Henry Cavendish, the British scientist, Freemason, and wealthy grandson of the Duke of Devonshire, created an experiment which he claimed successfully proved the existence of gravity, measured its constant and provided accurate figures for the exact masses of the Earth, Sun, Moon, and planets. Eric made a number of claims, and it turns out none of them are actually true. While the Cavendish experiment certainly demonstrates the apparent attraction of mass to other mass, Cavendish never mentioned proving the existence of gravity. A gentleman by the name of Isaac Newton had mathematically defined gravity over 110 years prior to the Cavendish experiment. Gravity was an accepted phenomenon and its existence didn't require any proof. Secondly, you said he measured its constant. The universal gravitational constant wasn't spoken of until about 100 years after the Cavendish experiment. A gentleman by the name of Charles Vernon Boyce was the first guy to actually talk about what we today call Big G. Then you said Cavendish measured the masses of the Earth, the Sun, the Moon, and the planets. Cavendish didn't measure the mass of anything. Cavendish measured the density of the Earth. That was the stated purpose of the experiment. In fact, it's contained in the very first sentence of his paper presented to the Royal Society in 1798. Apparently, you have never read the Cavendish paper. It might help if you did. How did Cavendish achieve this quantum leap for heliocentric pseudoscience? He fixed two large lead balls on opposite ends of a torsion balance and hung them from the roof of his shed. Now, wait a minute. These are the large lead balls. This is not the torsion balance. The large lead balls hang from that structure at the top that allows them to rotate. This is the torsion balance. The small lead balls are hanging from the torsion balance. You really didn't spend very much time looking at this, did you? By watching and recording slight motions of the contraption via telescope through his shed window so his mass would not affect the reading, Cavendish claimed to have proven gravity. Again, Cavendish never claimed to have proven gravity. And while he certainly did observe the experiment from outside the building, his real concern was for not opening the building and exposing the experiment to changes in temperature. That was his real concern. Two small lead balls were hung near the large ones, and any motion observed towards one another was touted as being the influence of gravity. Now, the Cavendish experiment has been widely criticized by the scientific community because never in over two centuries since its creation has anyone been able to replicate it. Well, let's see. There was C.V. Boys, I mentioned earlier, in 1894. Then the U.S. National Bureau of Standards in 1930 and again in 1942. Since then, the Cavendish experiment has been repeated in physics classrooms, in universities all over the world, not to mention all of the research facilities that have done it to a very high level of precision. And then you have this one, a near exact duplicate of the Cavendish device by Blue Marble Science 2021. 
Your information would seem to be wrong. Firstly, the balls simply do not always attract one another, as they must, for the so-called gravitational constant to be constant at all. Sometimes the torsion balance turns towards the balls, and sometimes away, as it is impossible not to give some slight tremulous motion when interacting with it. Here's a summary of the last 16 of 46 tests that I performed, and not once in 46 tests did the balls ever go in the wrong direction. I would point out that my gravitational constant average over 46 tests is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 11th newton meter squared per kilogram squared, with a standard deviation of 2.74 times 10 to the minus 12th. That is very similar to the equivalent values Cavendish measured. In fact, slightly better. Henry even complained in his notes how often as he was performing the measurement, the contraption was still in oscillation. Cavendish wasn't complaining. That oscillation is a normal part of the experiment. The oscillation gives us the torsion constant. The amount of deflection gives us the force. We have to have the oscillation, otherwise we can't make the measurements. Secondly, since his calculated force of gravity was 10 to the 39th power weaker than the force of electromagnetism, from which all material objects are composed, there is no control for the experiment, which can factor out and positively differentiate the alleged gravitational force from the known, stronger, electromagnetic force. In other words, the balls could simply be attracting each other through static electricity, a known force existing in all things billions of times stronger than gravity and impossible to control for the experiment. Cavendish addressed concerns about magnetic interference by ensuring that all of the materials used in the construction of the balance were diamagnetic materials. I did the same thing. Cavendish didn't take any extra precautions for electrostatic shielding, but I did. I lined the inside of the enclosure with copper foil, which was grounded to an earth ground. Concerns about electrostatic or magnetic interference were addressed by both Cavendish and myself. Even though no one could replicate Cavendish's findings, the experiment went down in history as a great success and is still taught as veritable proof of universal gravitation in science textbooks today. Well, what can I say? Eric Dubay is just wrong. The Cavendish experiment has been repeated tens, if not hundreds of thousands of times. This Cavendish experiment got nearly identical results to the ones Cavendish got. And this equipment is currently in operation at the University of Tennessee here in Knoxville. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that little like and subscribe button down there. Ring the little bell if you want notifications. If you want to support the channel, patreon.com slash bluemarblescience or paypal.me slash bluemarblescience. And I'll see you guys on the next one.